longer see who you get. Well, Skippy, Pierre, good to sit down with you both. I hope you guys are well. Um, we're talking about mental health or mental well-being today, just about you know how some tools maybe that you guys have kind of brought along the way. And uh, Skippy, I'll start with you, being a, a young academy recruit. Uh, but tell us, like, how did you have to like uh, transition, and what tools did you use to kind of work through the different stages from kind of going from just being, oh, I'm Oliver Skip to, oh my gosh, Oliver Skip, you know, uh, Spurs midfielder, like. Tell us what you went through um, and how you dealt with that. No, it's nice when you see people, <laughs> especially when you go to areas where you've grown up in and you still see people that, I don't know, I went to school with and you come and have yeah. a chat with that or people that you've known for from a very young age. So um, it hasn't been, it's not too crazy for me. I mean, for other players, probably like Harry, Sonny, it, it can be a bit crazy, but for me, it's, it's very nice. I'm always happy to, to stop and to speak to fans. That's brilliant. And what's your like relationship? And this is to you as well, Pierre. What's your relationship with social media? Like, is it, are you quite, yeah, let's use it and engage with it? Or because obviously we do know that it can be a bit of a whirlwind and can like suck you in. Um, but how have you both managed uh, social media as you've kind of come into the professional game? Um, just for me, I'm not massive on it. I like, I'll go on it, I'll post a picture here and there, but it's not something. I'm actively on like posting, um, but I'm not one to like read loads of comments yeah, because okay. I feel like you know how football is. One minute everyone loves you, next minute so so no, it's it's something that I engage with, but I try not to spend my whole life on there. I think that's really helpful. And how about you, Pierre? Like, how do you engage with social media, being a, a professional? Uh, I think. Um, as the year goes on, it's obviously a bigger and bigger thing. But also, I think what is important is some sort of platform where you can make the fans uh, feel like they get to know you or you pay the support back in terms of saying thank you or, uh, how you say, sharing the, the, the enjoy, uh, enjoy, 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 enjoying moments or yeah. the, the joy. Yeah. You know, these kind of things, so you can really use it in a positive way and that's what I try to do. I try to give back to people, sometimes try to, to show them a little bit who I am. But obviously, uh, uh, also I think uh, as many, let's say, football players are, you'd like to keep certain things a bit private. Brilliant. And so you talk, you both talk about support. Skippy, you're just saying it's nice to see, you know, people from school. And obviously you're talking about uh, Pierre, you know, people in your comment section. I guess, you know, you guys have like, you play for Tottenham Hotspur, you know, this is no small club. How um, work through that? Like, have you had to put boundaries in place to just, you know, in, in terms of how people interact or, you know, uh, what tools have you had to, to use to just to make sure that you kind of enjoy the journey but not get too sucked up in the journey? When you first come, like play for the first team, like very exciting and you tend to probably read more stuff than as you get get older, go on uh, through through the journey. So I think for me, just uh, it's nice to see like fans' comments. I love seeing that, but sometimes I don't know, just keeping back from from certain things, just to not protect yourself, to to make sure that you're you're only seeing what what's helpful for you. I think it is about protecting yourself. Think, to protect yeah. yourselves in terms of I don't know, you don't need to see a million comments about about who's doing this, who's doing that. Obviously, again, we're talking about mental health, I guess. Skippy is kind of a little bit relevant to you right now, but like, how on a, how do you deal with when you're injured? You know, what do you, you know, there's obviously lots of thoughts going through your mind and stuff like that, but what for you has been um, something that's helped you whilst kind of recovering from injury? Um, just in terms of this, it is difficult. I think that all footballers want to be on the pitch doing what they love, um, but no, it's, it often, I've found this time, it's given you a little chance to, to look back on what you've done so far in the season. So it's been nice in terms of that, um, because when you've got games every three days, you don't get that chance. So just try to use this time to look back, but <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's very frustrating. Of course, of course. Everyone's, you're desperate to get back on the pitch, but I don't know, for me, like, I've been doing some upper body, so because maybe I can have done as much during the season. So just other little things that you can do to try and try and improve yourself while, while you are injured. Um, but also like talking to your family, seeing your family, that helps you get through it 100%. 
That's great. And how about you, Pierre? For a young player who's injured, what would, you know, Skippy spoke about, like looking back on what you've done, which is obviously a really good reflection, is really important. What would you say is a good tool to use um, for a young person who's dealing with injury? I think it's all, for me, it's two things. It's one thing is, is always to work on improvement because just because you can't kick the ball doesn't mean you can't improve, mm -hmm. which means you can improve in uh, diet aspect, living style aspect, gym aspect, preparing your body, uh, all this kind of aspect in terms of uh, when you get back, you are not only as good, but maybe further than when you uh, got the setback. Um, and the second thing for me is that I think it's always important that just because you at the moment are injured or you are not able to play or you are not involved in the, in the games by many different reasons, doesn't mean your life is not good. Mm. You understand? Like, that. like really I understand that we are often measured by 90 minutes every week, but you are more than 90 minutes every Saturday or 90 minutes every Tuesday. Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, you, you are the, 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 the person that you present to the world every single day. So I think, I think you both raised brilliant points on that um, in terms of, yeah, more than, more than just the game. You know, obviously we all love football, don't we? Um, now, PA, obviously you um, are not from London. You've obviously come over. Tell us a bit about how you kind of adjusted from, you know, traveling abroad and playing in another new country. How you say? I always said that when you get abroad, away from home, mm. your values always get more dominant. Because when you are feeling a little bit uncomfortable or in a new phase in your life, you try to hold on to things that you know really well. Mm. And this is in the end maybe your values, you mm. know? Uh, so for me, it was always about keeping the values that I have as a person, as a sportsman, uh, but still adapting as a human being to, to the different environments to the different languages. And uh, probably the thing that I was uh, creating most positive experiences with was to be curious, mm. always to be curious on the, on the culture, mm. on the improvement around you and the, the, let's say the, the next level. Mm. Always curious to see uh, what another country has to give. And in the end, I think also we are we are privileged, you know, mm. because we are able to, 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 to play in front of so many fans, to travel the world by doing what we love. I like it, Pierre. You have a very good perspective on this. Yeah, things. but when you, you get do. two kids and you <laughs> sort of uh, start to realize things a bit, you, 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 you learn to adapt, but also learn to stay a bit more neutral well, that in good and difficult moments. Yeah. That leads me nicely just to wrap this up um, about support systems. You talk about your family, but not just, you know, maybe your partner, but, you know, friends and family. How important, uh, just a line just from both of you, is it to have good support systems, um, you know, when you're in this job playing at such an elite level of football? For me, I think it's crucial. Um, I think I've spoken about it before, but I still got the same friends that I went to school with and they just give me, it's nice that they're outside of football, just a different perspective. They still, I don't know, like I'll give the ball away, they'll be in the group <laughs> chat or something like that. Yeah. And it's nice to come have that more real life as such. Brilliant. And you to end, Pierre, how important is support systems for you in this level of football? I think it's uh, what Skippy says. I think it's everything because uh, um, I have experienced to be in this environment alone, living in my house alone, nobody at home, coming home, empty rooms, you know. Mm -hmm. And now I'm experiencing with two kids, a wife, family at home. So for me, the best is to come home and there's somebody in the house that sees you as the person yeah, and not the, absolutely. the football player, you know. Uh, although uh, I love the, the game, you need to have people that sees you just as who you are you know, because this gives you this great balance that we all need. Brilliant, I love that. Well, both of you, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts um, today.